In this video, we're going to introduce the concept of integrated rate laws. So in the one of the previous lectures on rate laws, I noted that there are two different types of rate laws. There's differential rate laws and integrated rate laws. So the differential rate laws are the ones that we've been dealing with, right? They relate the rate of the chemical reaction to a rate of change, right? This is a differential rate law. But one of the limitations of differential rate laws is that it only tells you the rate at which something is decreasing. It doesn't really tell you, it doesn't give you that absolute predictive power to say at time T, the, there will be a concentration of this, right? You want to eventually have a unifying equation that says at time T, I'm going to have a concentration of my reactant of X, right? So, um, so that's what the integrated rate law actually gives us. And it's built on the differential rate law. So let's let's show this a little bit. So we know that if we have a general reaction, let's just be very general and say we have some reactant A that forms some products, right? We know that we can build out the rate of the reaction, right? So if we assume a first order reaction, so assume that this is some first order reaction where A yields products. So assume first order then we know that we can write out the reaction rate in the following way, where we have some reaction rate constant times the concentration of A, right, raised to the first power. So we know that we can write out the reaction rate in this fashion, right? We also know that we can write out the reaction rate in the following way, right, where we'll have negative change in concentration of A over change in concentration of T, right? These are equivalent statements of the rate of the reaction. So what that means is that we can set these two equal to each other. So if we set them equal, then we get the following expression. So we get negative dA over dT is gonna be equal to the rate constant times the concentration of A, right? So this gives us, this sets up a differential equation here where we have related this differential to the concentration, right? Now, the way that you would solve a differential equation is to get like terms on both sides and then use some calculus. So I'm actually gonna show the calculus. For a general chemistry course, you would not be required to know this or to be able to do this, but I just wanna show it so that for my mathematically inclined people, people who are familiar with some calculus, it kind of, it'll make sense here, right? So you have this differential equation. Let's put like terms on both sides. So let's say we have, um, so if we do some algebra here, we'll have negative dA over the concentration of A, right? And then we'll move DT over so that we have, um, I'm actually gonna erase this negative sign. I'm gonna go ahead and move this negative sign over. So we have negative K DT, right? So all I've done here is, do, is to do the algebra, multiply or divided by A, concentration of A on both sides, and then multiply by DT and uh, negative one on both sides to get this result. Now, what we can do is to do something from calculus called integration. So what we can do is integrate on both sides. Right, and if you, if you integrate on both sides, so what you're gonna do here um, in calculus, this is just basically a way to uh, sum up all of the uh, contributions over a certain range of a variable. Right, so in, in terms of calculus, you draw this squiggly line here, which is your integration symbol. And then you basically say what you're integrating, the range that you're integrating over. So on the left-hand side, I'm gonna integrate over the range of the initial concentration to the final concentration. So we'll have the initial concentration of A to the final concentration of A, right? And then we're integrating this function one over concentration of A with respect to the concentration of A, right? So this would be an integral, right? Um, and then on the right-hand side, we're integrating with respect to time. So you factor out the, um, the reaction rate constant since it's just a constant. Constants don't get involved in integration. You can factor them out. And we're gonna integrate from the initial time to the final time T with respect to T. Okay, so without going into the nuts and bolts of it, when you solve this integral on the left-hand side, you'll get the natural log of A 
minus the natural log of the initial concentration of A. So this A naught is the initial concentration of A. So you get this on the left hand side. And then on the right hand side, you get negative K T minus T naught, right? So whatever your, your time is minus the initial time. Right. Okay. So um, if we use, usually when we're talking about kinetics, the initial time T zero is always, uh, the initial time T naught is always T zero typically, right? You just take talk about your time range. You can set anything to be time equals zero. So if we assume that T naught is equal to zero, then we can rewrite this expression in the following way, right? This T naught will be zero. So you just have ln A minus ln A naught. It's going to be equal to negative KT, right? Whatever your elapsed time is. And then if you want to solve for the final concentration, then you just move this over to the other side. So you have negative KT plus LN A naught. Okay, so this final expression, this is our integrated rate law, right? So this gives us the integrated rate law for a first order reaction. Now, every order of reaction, so zero order, first order, second order, third order, on and on and on, each one will have their own integrated rate law, right? Each of these will have their own integrated rate law. It's gonna have a different form because this integration is gonna change. All the nuts and bolts change, and so you'll end up with a different expression. So this is only the integrated rate law for only a first order reaction, right? This will only work if you know that your reaction is first order. But if you know that your reaction is first order, this equation is really, really powerful, right? So first off, notice that it has the same form of the straight line um, equation, right? We have Y equals MX plus B, right? So this means a couple things. First off, if you just look at the equation, you know that you have the type of equation we were talking about in the beginning. If you plug in a time T, you can calculate the final concentration of your reactant. Very powerful, right? You can figure out how much of your reactant will degrade over time just from using this equation directly and plugging in the time. What this also means is that if we were to make a plot now I'll try to keep this small so I can fit it on this slide, right? Let's say we had a plot here and let's say that the Y axis was LN of A and the, um, and the X axis was time, right? If we had a plot of natural log of um, the concentration over time, we would get a straight line relationship, right? Because it follows the straight line equation, right? So you would get a straight line here for the nat for the uh, if you plot the natural log of the concentration over time, right? So straight line equation, uh, very useful for being able to calculate the concentration of your reactant at a given time t directly, right? Without having to talk about the rate of the reaction, right? All you have to do is plug in your time, and you can calculate your concentration. Very very powerful stuff. Okay, so um, so this is integrated rate laws. Um, in the next video, what we're going to look at is how what some of these plots look like. So um, this type of plot here, some actual data, what a plot like this would look like um, and go through an example of doing some calculations based on that data.